All right, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I want to say shalom to you. Uh, we're right here at Pyros, and you still have time to come out. We're on the Pyros at Ridgeway. I want to say hello for those who are watching by way of social media, and then those who are able to make it out on tonight. Um, so at this time, we're going to turn right over to Dr. Larry. And um, uh, also, we want to find out, does anybody have any questions? Sometimes we open up with questions. Do we want to go in Q&A, or we want to go right into? Hey, I mean, you flow. I mean, okay. anybody get anything? Yes. Does anybody have a question that they would like to ask? And we are on. And oh, then for those who are watching, you can type your question. If we can't get to it immediately, we'll make sure that we address it um, um, a little later on. Right. Okay. So on, on the uh, Facebook media. Right. They, in the chat on YouTube and uh, what is it, Instagram? Mm -hmm. When it gets posted, we'll come back and, and uh, address those questions if, if they like it. All right, we've already prayed, so we're ready. All right, all right. Okay, so um, we, 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 we want to get back into this teaching, the series, dealing with the family. Of course, uh, we are out tonight here at Pyro's, and uh, so you hear some background noise and stuff like that, but it's okay. Uh, we're going to keep rolling. All right, so now I want to start here, and everybody see what this says, right? What, the Lord would not bless a mess. He would not bless a mess. And we've been talking about these concepts relative to the kingdom concepts of what we should have a concept it, it isn't a concept until you know it you receive it because a concept is a reception and agreement with a what a precept an idea that came to you or a thought that came to you so when i say concepts i'm speaking from what we have what i have the holy spirit have, have illuminated in my mind and showed me in the word and we're teaching uh these concepts that we know now when it comes to you it's going to come in the form of a precept. So I always remember that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm critical on terminology because a precept is the original idea of thought. We're going to teach precepts based on the concept that we have, and we're convicted and we believe it. That's why we teach it. So all ministers need to remember that you only teach what you're convicted of. And those convictions are a result of your concepts, and those concepts should be the precepts of the kingdom. That's the only thing that we can teach and that's accurate. So um, dealing with different families and we show you some worldly concepts now the lgbtq plus that that whole family is a worldly concept of what a family is it's not a kingdom concept of a family also religion accept different forms of family what does religion does i saw a sign on the way here uh that what saturday is still god's holy sabbath sabbath truth.com something like that and I say, ain't that amazing that uh, Saturday, a, day, a day that was named after a Greek Roman god, uh, Saturian, is holy relative to God. Ain't that something he, he made a false god holy? Ain't that something? You see, and, the, and people believe that because of religion. Religion is one of the most powerful force that's in existence on the inside of everybody I'm talking to and everybody that's alive right now. The other most powerful or the most powerful force that's working in you is your what your belief system you seeing it so if you religion is what we think we know about divinity or about the divine one elohim what we think we know you understand and so when we believe something or a person believes something it controls them i don't care how wrong it is they are all the first fight and everything else something as simple as that taking a secular Gregorian worldly calendar with a Greek Roman false god and declaring that to be holy by Elohim. So that's, that's very simple to understand. We get kingdom concepts in you. So he would not bless a mess or bless anything that's out of order. So now, can or will the father bless a couple cohabitating together, being intimate, and they are not married? Can he bless them? So a lot of pastors need to stop praying over couples like that and blessing them. You know, the pastor's blessing them, but the Holy Spirit isn't. He can't because he cannot bless a mess or he cannot bless anything that's out of order. Another word for bless is actually Baruch in the Hebrew. And there's another one, Asar, over in Psalms 1. <clears throat> when the scripture said, blessed is the man or a woman who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor what? Stand in the way of the sinner or sit in the seat of the scornful, but there the light is in the what? 
teachings and instructions of Yahweh, and in that in those teaching instructions, they meditate day and night, and they cause the way to be prosperous, right? Whatever word blessed there is Asar, and it means to be in a state of prosperity or a state of success as a result of the decision that you made. You seeing that now? Yeah. All right, the Baruch has been done already. Ephesians, uh, FEM 1 and 3 tells us, blessed be uh, Elohim, the father Ab of Yeshua HaMashiach, who have already empowered us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Heavenly places, that's our home. The kingdom of heaven is where we get our sanctioning from to be successful and be empowered. Now, we are here on the earth. Y'all catching it? So everything in the spiritual always supersedes and override everything in the natural. See, supernatural is super on the natural, and it changes. So our empowerment is super natural. That's how we overcome stuff in the natural without using natural means. That's how we advance and be successful financially without using natural means. Now, we... We do what we're supposed to do, you know, entrepreneur, you know, doing our due diligence and our business, stuff like that. But other things happen for kingdom citizens that we just get favor in stuff that others don't get because it's what? Super on the natural. You understand? Some, we just got something uh, done uh, this week, I believe, and I've been talking about it. It's been like 10 years. I said, we're going to get this set back up. It's going to happen. It's going to manifest, you know, and at the time. You know, it's still what I thought based on the uh, couple more years I needed, it didn't happen that way. The super came on the natural and got everything. I mean, just we got the, what, the email yesterday, you know. And so that was, that was, that's the super on the, you, you catching it now? Now, that happened because of the Hebrew word for blessed, Asar, because of a decision that we made to be faithful stewards of the money that he allowed us to come into to be, what, tithers? returning fr first fruits, giving free will offering, because we do that and we put our hands to what we are doing and do our due diligence in terms of doing business, you know, with integrity and putting the work in and stuff like that. So because we made those decisions, things were able to happen and put us in the state that we're in. You see it? So others may say, well, I want that too. I want it. Well, you can get it, but you got to make the same decision. And actually that word translated mean to be in a state of success that the world or sinners will envy you. That's what it means. And it also, the tools of revelation, if you look at each Hebrew letter word, it actually means to have the fire of the prince on your thinking or to be sanctioned with your, uh, the authority that you're operating with come from the fire of his word. So if the fire of the word is in your mind, on your mind through meditation, then it's going to consume us and we're going to do things the way the kingdom said do it and things will just be added to us. Now, I'm just saying that relative to finance. Now, let's look at family. Now, so when I say it, that he cannot bless a couple that's living together who are not married, he cannot. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care how, many, how much oil you pour in the house and all that. It don't, he, he can't bless it because he don't bless nothing that's what? Out of order. All right. And since we're thinking about order, and I'm just doing some in introduction because I want to uh, get down here. We, we're talking about order, right? Okay, so... I know I want to start off at, I'm going to come back. Genesis, uh, bear a sheep. We want to look at, uh, what is it, 48 and 16. Let's look at something. So we want to really get into those seven, that seven-point vision of a mother or of a woman, wife, mother, or of a wife, mother. We want to look at that. And we're going to just review the seven-point vision of men. Now, every time we've been teaching this Fight for the Family series for years, and I'm just now getting to <laughs> teach in the area where the women are concerned because we had to deal with the source. Now, let's get in here, but prior to getting here, let's validate more uh, of what the kingdom uh, concepts are relative to war order or kingdom precepts so we can get, get them, okay? Now, when you look at order, the father is still the source. You remember in the beginning, what did the father do? He created spirit being. He created that male body and put that spirit in. Y'all remember Adam? And then what did he do? He put Adam to work. To work doing what? Managing and governing the earth and everything in the earth. That father, that source, had the authority given to him by the father to call everything what it was. And when he called it, that, that, that was its function. 
whatever he said it was, that's what it was. He named everything, right? Okay, now when he got ready to make the uh, Isha or the female or the woman, which Isha, what did he do? He didn't go back to the dirt. He didn't go back to the earth to create her and make her body. He went back to the source of all creation who is the what? Father. Y'all seeing it? Now, that's not for men to think that you, you are a dictator or you rule over people, stuff like that. Nobody rule over nobody. That's for men to understand that we are source. We are a source just like the father is a what? Source. So what did he do? He went in and got a rib, right? We know why he got a rib because rib have stem cells in the, in the rib. The only bones in the body that carry those stem cells that can regenerate. All our bones can repair themselves, but the ribs can regenerate. So he took a rib and, and cloned the woman. He went back to the source. Is that correct? So what was he doing? He was establishing order. Now look at uh, Genesis, uh, Barashit 48 and 16, and we're going to see what some of the um, authority that came with the order of a source or father-husband. Because to have children, a man not only must be a father, he must be a husband. In other words, he must be married according to the order of the kingdom. But men get women pregnant and have babies outside of marriage. Is that correct? And that is out of order. And if you say something about the baby showers and all this celebration, people get mad, you know, but I, I just say get mad. Hell is matter. But it's our responsibility as ambassadors to just let them know what are the kingdom precepts relative to this. How do Elohim, what is his word relating to this? I know religion says, okay, and this, that, and the other, but he cannot bless anything out of order. It's not the child's fault. He will bless that child. <clears throat> you know, he'll do things for him, but he cannot bless that union or that out-of-order union and cause things to happen. Y'all seeing it? So if actually the kingdom citizens begin to operate by kingdom law and kingdom rule, well, most of them don't that I know. They don't do that. They say, well, you know, we'll we are, uh, support you if you need something or, or things like that, but we can't really do no celebrations because we're celebrating something that's out of order. Okay? Now, only religious folk, and if you got religion in you, here's a test. I don't think that's right. That's religion talking, you see. And that religion is their result of, result of receiving that idea that religion is promoting and that you got the concept now you're convicted that it's okay. You know, like people tell people, well, just go on, stay with them a while. Y'all move in together, you know, and make your decision on what you want to do. And I hear all kind of crazy. And these, these are Christian people talking and saying this. And well, you still say God understand. Their God do understand, but the one who created everything, he don't. He got his word. And the only thing he stand by is his what? His word. You seeing it? All right. So let's look at this. The Barashi 48 and 16. Barashi 48 and 16. You ready? All right. Now, let me, uh, let's start a sift. Uh, let's, i tell you what. Let's go up. We want to, yeah, let's go up. Let's watch. Now, uh, we're going to begin reading at verse 10. Now, here is Yisrael blessing his son. It's, it's the order of the government of heaven. The order of the government of heaven have sanctioned on earth for the source father to have authority to bless the family. Isn't that something? The father to bless the family. There is a in a inherited anointing in every father to release blessings on the family. You see, now that can't happen if those who are to receive it is out of order, out of position. It can't happen if the father's out of position and don't have knowledge of who he actually is. Now watch this. Now Israel's eyes were failing because of old age and he could hardly see. So Yosef brought his sons close to him. And his father kissed them and embraced them. Yisrael said to Yosef, I never expected to see your face again. And now Elohim has allowed me to see your children too. Then Yosef removed them from Israel's knees and bowed down with his face to the ground. What did Yosef do? He bowed down with his face to the ground before his father. What was Yosef doing? He was honoring the order of the kingdom of heaven government and respecting that father. You catching it? You know, Isaac, Yisik, he was going to lay on an altar and let his daddy kill him. 
This is the relationship that fathers supposed to have with their sons and sons with their father to honor their father to the point of that. If I need to be sacrificed and you need to kill me, do it then. You seeing this? I mean, you see, I'm just reading scripture to you. You know that happened. Your Yisik was a type of Yeshua. And what did the father say? Because you refuse to not sacrifice, or you, or you agree to sacrifice your son, now I can sacrifice mine and save everybody. But if, relate, if it wasn't there, if that honor and respect for the father wasn't there, it wouldn't have happened. That's how important it is to understand this because the father couldn't do anything in the earth because he gave dominion to man. He gave the, and placed the order on man how to operate. And when man kept the order, he was, they enabled him to intervene and interpose what he wanted to do in the earth. He needed to get another, the last Adam in the earth. But first he had to have a covenant agreement with a man in the earth who was legal and had the authority and dominion in the earth order to do that. That's how important it is. Now, I know... A lot, that's, that's, that's a cultural shock, but that's the way it is. So here we hear Yosef bowing before his father. I guarantee you he wasn't being friends with somebody who hated his father, neither. And y'all need to catch that. Youth. That's why I keep teaching this, and you're seeing this principle of order right here. Y'all catching it? All right, so he kissed, he, um, he removed, okay, took, okay, blah, 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 and brought down, okay, but Israel, now here we go, then Yosef removed them from Yisrael's knees and bowed down, with his face to the ground, and Yosef took both of them, Ephraim, on his right toward Yisrael's left hand, and Manasseh on his left toward Yisrael's right hand, and brought them close. And what was, what was Joseph doing? He was positioning the older to receive the right hand blessing first, and the second born to receive his blessing. But the oldest always got a double portion, a double blessing. And Ephraim Watch this right here. Even when Yosef named Ephraim Ephraim, following the leading of the spirit of, of Elohim, he didn't even know that Ephraim would end up being the one who received the firstborn blessing. But check this out. Ephraim means double blessing. It means double increase. Y'all catch this? That, that's what that means. So uh, fathers, by him naming that boy, listen to the Holy Spirit, naming that boy, he had already released his destiny in it. Already. You seeing it? And just like my son, uh, my wife was saying, <laughs> she kept asking, what's his name? I don't know. When I hear the Holy Spirit speak to me, I will tell you until then, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just not saying it. And what, you was eight, nine months, something like that? I was nine months. She was, she was nine months. <laughs> nine months. And I heard it so clear in my spirit, his name is Israel, Yisrael. As that's it. No more struggle. The struggle is over. And what she was doing, she was submitting to the order of the government of heaven and acknowledging, honoring the father's authority and anointing to name the, those children. You see it? Now, most women don't do that. They name them after Cheerios and cornflakes, cornbread and everything else. The daddy don't, dads are not naming no, these kids now. And we got a mess. That's why it's so important, I said again, for men to understand who they, if they don't know who they are, they don't know. You seeing it? And so it's left up, and what happens? The mother, act, name the kids and stuff like that, is out of order. You seeing it? Yes. I mean, are you, if you believe the word, I'm just teaching you the word. Okay, now, so where we left off at? All right, verse 14, verse 14. But Yisrael, here's the dad, here's the great dad. I'm not a granddad, I'm a great dad. I keep telling, I'm the great father. <laughs> but Yisrael reached out his hand and put it on Ephraim's head. Though he was the younger and crossing his arms, he put his left hand on Manasseh, even though Manasseh was the firstborn, then he blessed, then he blessed Joseph and said, and he went on to bless him. Now watch this right here. And then verse 17 when Yosef saw his father placing his right hand on Ephraim's head, he was what? He was displeased. Yosef didn't like that. He didn't like that. He said, wait, hold on now. That's, that's not the oldest. You're you messing up, Dad. But what happened? So he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from the head of a Manasseh's head. He was helping his dad out. He had got out of order. Yeah. See, the son is not 
to get out of order when the father give those directions and is operating his anointing and what he had been given to do. But the son just figured, oh, dad can't see good, so I'm going to go and help dad out. Right. He, he was innocent in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he took hold of his father's hand and moved it from Ephraim head to Manasseh head. Joseph said to him, no, my father, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head, making sure that firstborn get the blessing. But his father refused and said, I know, my son. I know. He, too, will become a people, and he, too, will become great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his descendants will, be, will become a group of nations. He blessed them that day and said, in your name, in your name will Yisrael pronounce this blessing, May Elohim make you make make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Then Israel said to Yosef, I'm about to die, but Elohim will be with you and take. Now, I, I just I just get emotional every time I get in this part. Because here, here's the destiny. Here's a final destiny, the final release of the assignment of every father on the earth. And that's to bless those kids. Not to take none to the grave. Release that blessing on them boys. They're going to do the same thing with the families. You seeing this? Yeah. So who set Ephraim as the firstborn? Not the father. The great father did. Yeah. And watch, the father didn't re re rebel against him. Because when, when, when his dad spoke, Joseph backed up. Because he understood the order of honoring the father being a source. Y'all seeing it there? Yes. All right. So, you know, this is missing in most church teaching and church organizations and religion. This is what we're teaching right now. Th these precepts are missing. All right. So when, when we understand how the laws of the kingdom is set up, all we got to do is get in position. Oh, you trying to sign signs, so though. And here come mama. Well, them my boys. I, I went through the pain and suffering. Well, maybe if you, your mama... Our great grandma hadn't did what she did. Probably wouldn't be. But anyway, you know, I, I did that. I saw his eyes. When you get through I, 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 you still are anointed or sanctioned to release the blessing on those kids. That source is. And when we acknowledge the source, who do we acknowledge? We acknowledge who? The Father. All right. Let's, let's, uh, I'll tell you what, in Numbers 16, you'll find this number 16, but I want to I move on. We just want to establish this, that he will not bless and power anything that's out of order. You seeing it? Now, in number 16, uh, you will find that Korah, you remember Korah? And they rose up against Moshe. Y'all remember that? Yeah. And then when uh, Elohim showed up, what did he say? He said, man, you're talking against me. I can imagine Korah, I ain't saying nothing to you. I was talking to Mo Moshe. Well, when you talk to Moshe, you're talking to me. I'm the one told him to do what he is doing. So when you, when you speak against him, you're speaking against me. There it is again, the order. You seeing it now? So that order is very important that we understand that. And again, it's not for no father husband to think he is in a position to dominate anybody. You seeing it? So I used to hand it. He said, no, my son, I know that. He said, I know, I, know I, I understand, but let me do what I'm doing. And he had already built a relationship where Yosef, you remember Yosef was the one that they sold. He was a dreamer, the visionary, y'all remember? And the one who got filthy rich. So he had enough money and power to tell dad, look, man, I got enough money to buy you, her, them, it. But he didn't do that. Like this little hip hop rebellious age is, you know. So it wasn't like that. So we need to understand the kingdom citizen, the order. All right, now, we went over this. What happens when fathers are what? When fathers are absent. And I, I just put that up there because we really want to get into the mothers. When fathers are absent, uh, there's hatred, anger, hostility. How do we find it out? We looked at the Hebrew word for what? Anger, hatred, and hostility. And we looked at the Hebrew word that means as a great demand uh, being announced or declination is being announced because something is missing. There's some problems here because something is, and that's all of you. The Father's is, uh, spirit is letting us know that there's something is missing, something's out of order. And because it's out of order, I can't bless it. And, that, and that's what it is, because you got the Aleph. Y'all seeing it? Y'all know this. Aleph, you, uh, bed, a bed. Y'all seeing it? All right. Uh, a Yab, that's a Hebrew word for hatred, hostility, or anger. And when you take that, that you out of there, you have Aleph, bed, or Aleph, bed, the spelling for what? Father. So he's saying 
because the father is absent or not present, you're going to have hatred and anger and hostility. All right, now we're going to move on uh, to the mothers, and I, I will, I'll go back, come back and go over that, that, that six-point vision of every father-husband. Leadership, responsibility, accountability, a visionary, discipline, mercy, and love, and provider of vision. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of... That's, that's a lot of that's a lot of junk in the trunk. <laughs> that's a whole load to carry right there. And you know, a lot of men are not responsible. They are playing a the game instead of on their knees. Playing a game instead of studying. Shooting pool instead of meditating. Doing everything else but what they should be doing to be able to give account for being responsible. That's what I always say to my family. It's my fault because I understand the order. I either did or did not do something to put this thing in check. I either allow something to happen or I stop something from happening, which I should not have stopped, or I allow something that I should not have allowed. You know, I'm, I got my dad, as my, we all got our great, 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 great granddaddy blew it, Adam, when he let his wife stand there and talk, didn't do nothing. Blame, blame it on him. <laughs> okay, now, let's look at this right here, okay? All right, now we want to look at um, women, female by birth, woman, wife, mother by choice. Y'all see that? You know, because you're born a female, but you, what Isha, woman, mean what comes from the fire, the fire of the source. See, when you spell Adam, you break it down, you get the root, root word for blood, then you got the Aleph, and Aleph also means first a father. So Adam is the father's first blood in the earth. Y'all seeing it? And it, it's spelled Aleph, Dalet, Mim. All right. Now, and then you look at Isha. I don't have it up here. Isha is spelled Aleph, Shin, Hai. See, Aleph, Shin spelled fire. Okay. And Hai is on the end. That's a revelation of the fire. Woman is a revelation of the fire of created fire of heaven in the earth. The fire of heaven is purity. When he created Adam, the male man, in that pure state. Y'all seeing it? So every woman is what came out of the fire. Because he went back into Adam, the man's body, rib, and created the woman's what? Body, her spirit came from heaven. So a woman, that high is telling us that she is a revelation of the fire or of the purity of heaven on earth. Now that's a big load to carry, ain't it, women? Yeah, buddy, I, don't, I wanted to say something else. Boy, there's some big draws of where <laughs> you're supposed to be a revelation of the purity of heaven, not of the sexual seduction on earth. Y'all, you're going to hear me one of these days. And understand that when you're doing all that sexy stuff, you are walking in rebellion against who you should be reflecting. All right? So now. And I got the uh, the name here, Matzah Izaniget. Let's just hit him. Uh, matzah means to find, attain, to appear, to be discovered. Ezer, help, power to accomplish a task. One who assists and serves another with what is needed. And then Niget to be in front of, facing, or in the presence of. This is what is translated. And now we're going to see in the seven point vision, this is how you define yourself. You go back to the word. And you go into the word and you will actually see what a woman is, who she is, and what she's supposed to do. You find out what, what, what your vision and purpose is. You find it right there in the word. You don't have to go to no psychology class or astrology class or family class and let some doctor with 84 degrees from the north precincts, jurisdictions of the South Dakota uh, ranks. You go right to the word and you find out everything you need to know. Okay, now, where did this come from? Let's prove it out. Here's uh, Barashit 220, and you're going to see the original language right here. This is an interlinear, interlinear uh, Bible translation. you got the Hebrew original language as well as the English setting up top. And you'll see these words right here. Well, it, it's working. You'll see uh, right here, but for Adam. They translated that was not found. I can't, can't see how you get that out of there. And matzah mean to be found. Now, why is translated could not be found? You seeing it? All right. But for Adam. But for Adam. Is it trying to? 
Okay, you all can see. But for Adam, you see Masa, you see it? Ezer, Negad. You seeing it? Those are three, those, those are not just, those are names. I just gave, gave you the definitions of each one of them. And then you go into each one of these Hebrew letter words, you'll get more out of it. You'll get the mem. You seeing it? And you know this what? That's the power, uh, the power of the anointing of the spirit of life. And women carry life in them. You seeing it? And the uh, pictograph or hieroglyphic, actual hieroglyphic is a Greek term which means the uh, language of the gods. Or you can say language of the God. D-L. All right. Now, in a, it's a picture of a what? Water. A, a wave of ocean. The number 40 goes with that meal. The normal pregnancy is how many weeks? 40. 40. At that 40 week, what happened? A transition take place. What happened? The water break and the power of the spirit of life coming to the earth. A living, another, another living being coming to the earth. Right? Yeah. All right. That's all tied up in the meal. And then you get uh, Sadie, uh, and this is a, a picture of a hook or uh, to hook something and it means a strong desire for righteousness the word righteousness key word for uh that say that this uh alibet is using is righteousness it means to be hooked with a strong desire y'all seeing this a strong like women they have a strong desire urge just like yisrael is here because renee got an urge because we said well actually him and caleb wouldn't be if it's left up to me now that's it i'm through that's it that's why I didn't have no kids from first, because people act a monkey, act a nut, I'd be in jail somewhere. But I yielded to my wife, and I'm so happy that I did. So Yisrael, uh, this urge and urge, and I said, why did you get the urge about uh, a year and some after Caleb was born? Why you wait four years later to get the urge? But she had that strong desire, and we yielded to her. Now we got a blessing on our hands. All right, and then you got the Aleph on the end, you see? Now what is a woman is going to desire... She desire a father or source where she came from. She desire a spiritual leader who is connected to righteousness and have the spirit of life on him. He is in the presence of Elohim. See, Adam, as long as he stayed in the presence of heaven, he was fine. Every husband and father, as long as you're in the presence, you're okay. You don't have, and then that, that script said, whosoever find it, that, it's not talking about looking for it. That word find it is matzah. So whosoever obtain a matzah, find, what, obtain favor. Because he got a woman who is desiring righteousness, who desire a husband, father. She want to be, she have an urge for that. You seeing it? So the world project uh, a man is what? Oh, he fine, he cute, but he's not in the presence. Okay, all right, okay. You can clap later. And then you got... Ezer and then you got Negad. You seeing it now? Right there in the book, right? Okay, now, uh, and I just kind of broke them down what I just said, but I'm going to uh, just move forward here. All right, now, we want to hit what happens when most are absent. We did this, let's hit it again. You look at the Hebrew word for fear or terror, and you got the same thing here. You got an Aleph Yud, which means what? The spirit of life, the father. It's making a strong declaration that something is missing. That's why you have fear and terror. What's missing is right in the spelling of the word. You take the you out, just like we did move the you from uh, hostility to hatred, and you have the spelling for mother. The high on the end, heaven revelation of a mother. If heaven's revelation of a mother is missing, then that those children, that family, they're going to be in fear and terror. Yep. Notice I said heaven revelation. Just because you're a mother don't mean you reveal heaven. You reveal revelation of a, a mother who would de you would depict a mother that heaven is describing. The image of a mother that the father wants you to be. You seeing it? He don't want you dragging your kids around to different men's houses and stuff and smoking dope and cussing. That's not... That's not a revelation of a mother from heaven, a strong spirited one, because Aleph, Mem, also mean Aleph is strong in strength, and then Mem also means the spirit of life, a spirit. You seeing it? A revelation of a strong spirited, Matzah Izanigad, a strong spirited woman that loves the anointing. That's why you got so many women in what we call church. 
They just, they, they love, they love that spiritual, you know, and women are more susceptible spiritual than men are. We are more logical. We're the reasons, but women, they just hear something. Now let's go with this. And that's why Adam missed it at because he didn't check that. He was trusting her uh, tuition, not intuition, in, intuitiveness. Yeah, because women are heavily intuitive. Now, you know they are. And y'all know y'all are. You know, you be picking up stuff. What? What is it? I'm trying to sleep. No, something ain't right. Now, now what is it? <laughs> well, you better get up and check. Because my wife got up one time, an angel had sat on the bed. And she got up and what's going on? Went downstairs. Something was going on. House full of smoke. Okay, now. So, when this mother, not the ones you see on TV in other world, but when this righteous mother is absent in that child, we're talking about the family, right? Not only the children, but also the man is in, it, in that house. Man, the worst thing you can have is an unrighteous woman around you. She out, cuss, cuss you out. More dominant than you are. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's terrible. And men, they, they, they be telling me, they talk about it. I say, man, if I can just, if she can just be nice for one minute, one minute, that's why I don't go home. <laughs> All right. You're going to have what? Misconception of role play. Here's where lesbianism, women, uh, young girls want to be a, be a man because they got a misconception of their role play because they don't have a righteous mother. Oh, that's, uh-oh. Yeah, that's not the updated one. Okay. It's been revised. <laughs> I got kingdom concepts in there now. So the first one actually is misconception of role play. It's, it's totally different from this. So I don't know, Alicia may be fast enough to type them in. But just take your notes. Misconception. Oh, it's up here? That's okay. It's misconception of role play. I thought I emailed a revised one. We'll get it. No, no problem. Y'all just write it down. They can't see it no way. Misconception of role play. You know, these young women, young girls walking around here like boys. You know, looking like a boy, walking, talking like a boy, acting like a boy. They don't have no pattern. They don't have that feminine touch, you see, because of the absence of this righteous mother. Distorted communication skills. Distorted communication skills. All right, and we're going to see. I'm going to get this. I'm going to hit it in a minute. Masa Isa Negad, each one of these names that the father gave to Isha, you're going to see a revelation of each one of those in the seven point vision of a woman. Distorted communication skills because negad mean to be in the face or in the front of in terms of relationship. So if a young lady don't have her role play and don't have a righteous mother, she really don't know how to properly communicate. You know, have women that are real high, highly introverted, introverted, intro, and they really can't communicate good, and men take advantage of them because they see them as being weak. But a woman who could talk then you're on your P's and Q's. Depression, disassociation, absence of a righteous, I didn't say a mother did her, of a righteous mother who will reveal heaven in the earth and the fire purity of heaven in the earth. No rooted support system unstable. You, uh, you are not happy unless a man is in your life. You got to have a man. Could you come over here? Could where you been? You go to the stop sign and text you eight times, Instagram you 48 times, try to get message you on Facebook because there's no rooted support system is going to equal instability. Because easier mean to support. But it's going to take a righteous mother to teach that daughter who she is and mentor her. This is why young women, if you got a righteous mother, born again, spirit, fear, know the word, you better be talking and getting all that you can get out of her. I mean, as much as you can, you better get. And if she ain't, you better find one that is. Go on Google it. Search it out. You're going to mess your house up. Because, again, the Father is the source. The Word is the source. You understand this? I don't care what professor tell you what, you're going to mess up. going to mess it straight up. Insensitive, inefficient. Easier mean to be efficient. You understand? Negad is going to teach communication skills and to be sensitive. Okay? And then what is the other one? Inability to trust and very defensive. Can't trust nobody and very defensive. And then Sally come looking behind the ear 
and she go trust women more than she trusts a man, and she don't understand that the man still is your source. You seeing it? Yeah, yeah Sally. I don't know what, what, the, what is about Sally looking on that area? But it just they just change. They rather have a woman than have a man, and have a woman who want to be a man. So that stuff is just out of order. All out of order. So this stuff don't. There ain't nothing to play with because they'll tell them girls in college and high school, "Have you ever been with a woman?" I mean, that's popular now. And you see on TV, you're gonna two women. I mean, just everywhere you look. There they go. An uh, absence of righteous mothers. Women having babies. That's what happened. And whether, what, where does fear and terror come in? Because of what we just mentioned, all these things that's happening, this girl really knows that something is wrong, and she is terrified to really talk about it and to try to deal with it because she feels inefficient. So she is fearful of trusting, fearful of trusting even another righteous mother or anointed woman. I mean, they have to work on the open up, but, but old, old cussing, dancing, you know, sexual dressing, Amika, you'll go run tell her everything. I'm just teaching work. Teaching the wide. The wide. Now let's look, look at these seven points. First one is what? What is the first one? Oh, those scriptures. The first one is what? Access <laughs> The first one, actually, like I said, it's been revised. That's the old one. Where are they? Did I, did I open up the wrong one? Let me go up here. So you have to write them down. The first one, actually, is supporter of righteousness. A supporter of what? Righteousness. So y'all have to just, just take your notes. What's your vision? What is the vision? Vision is revelation of what? Come on, come on, come on, Isha's. Vision's revelation of what? Purpose. And your purpose carry with it the what? Ability to carry out what you've been designed to do. So you have the capacity to contain the ability, which is what you have been designed. It'll help you carry out what you've been designed to do. So every uh, uh, Isha, a woman, is a supporter of right when you was born this was in you now whether it come out or not see that's why we have to be mentored this is why it's so important we understand the necessity of family doing what they're supposed to do and everybody doing a role play because we got dysfunction out of order somebody missing a role play and if i don't know my role play i can't roll, roll it out and play Now, somebody ought to understand that. Where, 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 no, no, a role play was missed. And I say all the time, if I, I don't, well, you know the word. Okay, you know what? I'm learning the word. And, and what I know of, I'm learning, and you think I know, what about you? Okay. Relationship, now, support of righteousness will come from matzah. It's actually matzah and uh, easier. Because matzah mean what? A desire for righteousness. Y'all remember? And easier mean to support, right? So every woman, every Isha have in her to support righteousness. Again, this is where you have meeting where you got spiritual teaching and stuff like this, dealing with the word women will always be there. They y'all don't even know why y'all want to get up and go to Bible study. Or why you are set there and, and I mean I mean they be like this too. And not missing nothing. Men just, you know, doing this and playing a game. You know, and checking this and checking that. A woman would sit there and let, she'll let you teach her two hours. Because you know what? In her, it's a desire for righteousness. She'll support that. And then you have a relationship builder. That come from Negad. A relationship. I'll email y'all. Can I probably just email it to you and y'all can look at it, can't you? Because I got it right here. A relationship builder. That come from Negad. I tell you what, let me, uh, relationship builder. That come from Negad. So I did, I left that one. That, that stayed as it was. Negad is what? A communicator to be in the face of, right? Mm -hmm. Relation, some relationship builder, communicator. You understand? And you know, like we just talked about, they were for te terror. I mean, fear and terror. You know, some women freeze up because they don't, can't articulate properly or, or compete with that person who is talking and articulating. 
and they know they should, so they get in fear. They don't want to talk. And then here you come up saying all your words, writing so on, so on, so on, and they're intimidated. Communicator is number three. That's Negad again. Communicator. Negad, that's your last name that the father gave you. Adam called you Hava, translated in the English Eve, because you are the mother of all living. He still didn't take your name away. You still Matza Negad Eve. Matza is a Negad. That's the name that the father gave to every woman. When he named you, the anointing came in you to carry out your function, your purpose. It's up to you to get a vision and revelation of what you was per uh, 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 created to do. The third one, the fourth one is a revealer. I don't think that were yeah, revealer to bring forth. Repeat. A revealer to bring forth, repeat. See, all the woman came from, her, her body came from whose body? Her source, her father. You understand? That's why we say father, husband. And watch this right here. But every other human being came through the woman. So a revelation of the human race came through the woman. Lisha's sitting over there now. We, can, we can't see inside of her. We know something's in, in her stomach. It ain't four watermelons neither. <laughs> now, when that baby come out, it, he'll be revealed, right? Mm -hmm. So, women, you are a revealer. Here's your, one of your visions, the fourth one, and you bring forth. At least you're about to bring forth a son, right? And reveal a son in the earth, right? And then to repeat, that's where your prophetic anointing come from this way you're prophetic because a prophet actually repeat what's already been said by the prophet a wife will repeat to her husband the vision that the father have given him once you tell your wife your vision then she is going to repeat when situations come and trouble come she not there oh hey hey i don't know how we're gonna make it i got to go get a job you got to go get a job because you don't have you no know, your vision and if you knew your vision, what you would say, the father said this to you. He told her you dead and you gave it to us. And this is going to work for us. She's going to repeat. And then he going to, babe, you know, you're right. I'll tell Renee something. Sunday. I said, no. Uh, anyway, we're talking. I told her, I said, see, I needed that support. You needed to say that and repeat what the father already done and what he has given me. The gift that you see in me, repeat it. Continue to prophesy to me. You understand? So she, because she had a vision, a revelation of her purpose, she repeat. If she's not repeating, she out of order. You understand? Repeat. We don't have enough money. Repeat to him what the word said. If you repeat to him, we're in trouble. He's going to go out there and try to work 25 hours a day and kill himself. Because he's trying to please his wife. He wants you to be happy, and you sitting up there with yourself said in ignorance, not knowing who you are. The next one is a teacher of what? Of righteousness. I got godliness, but it's righteousness. I revise it. A teacher of righteousness. She's not teaching her sons to go get conscious. She's not teaching her daughter to have safe sex. She's not teaching her daughter to reveal her cleavage. She's not teaching her daughter to wear stockings outside like everybody else doing. She's not teaching her daughter to do all this stuff, be shaking and flopping around everybody. She's going to teach her righteousness. Spandex. All this mess I see these little girls wearing. Everybody got to show their booty now. They want you to know they got a booty. That's sex. What's in your head? Can you cook? Do you clean up? Oh, but you can dance and you find them. Can you read? Yeah, by the way, can you read? Did you graduate? See, none of those questions are asked because all, all you see is booty all the time. Booty and cleavage. That's all you're seeing. It's sexy, sexy, sexy. You're seeing it, and now you can see how that's a direct rebellion against the government of the kingdom of heaven that's out of order. Oh, it's six, he's 16. You can go and take her out. He done got the hotel, motel, whatever you want to call it, backseat, everything ready already. You know what they're going to go do? When you tell them to start dating, how are you going to tell somebody to start dating in a sexual inner dated? Everything is sex. You just gave them permission to. Date what for what? You don't, he don't have no job and she don't have no job. Now you got a baby. Now the grandparents got to work for another one. 
and run them down. down. Oh, my mama won't help me. She didn't help you love the person. You know, legs spread very easily. She didn't help you. Maybe she did. I don't know. Some girls, I'd be like, boy, they mama turning them out. Ain't she turning them out. Y'all know what turn out means. She done turned that girl out. The mama did it. Just put her out there. Six, trying to get on out of the house. Six, to be an agent of what? <laughs> well, it's changed. Agent of increase. Somebody say increase. Agent of increase. This easier. They come from easier and multiply because within every woman, every Isha, you have the anointing to receive and multiply. Whatever when you receive that vision from your husband, you, you get to work on it and multiply. I tell any man, if your wife is in business with you, brother, you supposed to make it. You suppose ain't no reason why you should not be successful. The only reason why is because she not, she is not carrying your vision, she's carrying her vision. Or she not helping you carry the vision that she, you are carrying. She is designed to make it happen. So when my wife got with me all the way, 100%, I'm not saying it was anything negative because I told her to do that daycare. I told her to do that. I told her to do that. But then we made a, and then she got in another business. And I told her, leave that, leave that alone. But it took a little while, but she left it alone finally. And when she finally 100%, it started popping. I already know it because I ain't nothing I can do. I know the order. I've been knowing this. And when she did that, bam. It don't mean that you have to get over there and work, work, work. It means that you in agreement, you're supportive, you're doing everything you can to make sure he is sharp, he is rested, he is, he is not overworked, he is not stressed, you're not nagging him, you're not wearing him down. If you can't do what he is doing, at least do that. You're going to multiply that thing. I ain't getting too many hallelujah. I figure, like, yeah, thank you. Hi, whoa, shobo. Roso, tomo, como. So we went to Tokyo now, Japan too. So before you want to talk about you need a man, if you need a man, you don't need a man. If you need a husband, you don't need a husband. The husband need you. And until every single lady get this, that he need me, you're going to be single or you're going to hook up with the wrong one. If you know that, you know who you are. Agent of increase and even intimacy. I'm, I'm talking over kids head like that. You know, when, when a man, you know, because you release when you release. I mean, you you release, you know, something left you. You trying to lay relax, rest. She pop up, want to go cook a full course dinner. Why? Because she just received some work. She just received something to multiply. Ain't the right Lisa. Say Lisa multiply. One little seed. Now look at that. Got a whole nother person in her. Went to work. You, 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 we can understand that, can't we? Yeah. I mean, this, this is stuff that this, this, the Holy Spirit be telling me. This is how he talked to me. I said, man, you know what? That, that is. That sure is. So it's in, and I, was just sharing, I just shared this with Renee the other day. That's why that's like that. I just want you to get the anointing that's in it. That's why you, you, when you get something, some turn on in you to go make it big and make it great and great and multiply it. This is why mothers are so important in their son's life. Because she's gonna, whatever he is doing and whatever he's trying to do, she's gonna get a hold to it and make it great and make it multiply it. Now, if you go overboard with it, you're gonna have a brat. Now, I've been talking to my sons about that. I would tell them today, listen, your mom is designed to support. She just gonna do it. She ain't, ain't even purpose, ain't not even doing on purpose. She's just going to support and do this, do that. Don't, and then you'll be bratted. So I have to come in and put things in check. Now I tell them, you ain't wearing my wife out. Get on up out here for 12th grade. <laughs> and what I'm coming across, I'm doing what a father's supposed to do. You understand? Oh, he, he let him know and know. Provide strong. Here's the seventh one. Y'all want this one? I, I just want to, I'm going to move on. That age of increase is awesome. Provide a strong spiritual, uh, I had that up in protection, but it's, it's been revised to provide strong necessary report. And you find it easier because the woman, Isha, provides strong necessary report. Because if support, provide strong necessary support. Easier mean to 
have what's necessary to bring the aid to support and make it successful. That's in you already. So whatever is necessary in that vision that the father gives to that father husband, you have what's necessary to make it happen. You only support what's necessary. That's why I say it there like that. You don't support Jojo down the street. It's necessary for you to support the person who put that ring on your finger. You don't support Susie and Anastasia and all them having all these problems. Your husband at home, you on the phone talking to them. And I, not, that's not necessary. What's necessary is your king is in the house. And when he get there, you don't get ready for him. You be ready when he walk in. Now, if you're on the phone and texting, email and all this, you're not ready when he walk in. He can sense it. Mind everywhere. My wife mind all over the place. And I need her here. I need the mind now. I need some support. You know, I, when I leave those jobs, if I worked in 14, 16 hour a day, like we was working out of town, I drove back home. It wasn't I was being wasteful. I needed her support. I need just being a presence and they would just settle stuff down. You know, everything I would need to just draw from it. She asked me about it. Wait, I said, listen, I need to be at the house tonight. I'm coming on. I need that. When I get to that house and get around her, the next day I know I'm going to be energized and have what I need. Okay? Because she show sure asked me, talking about, well, no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to. I mean, she was just trying to, you know, be humble, you know. Be humble. You don't have to do all that, baby. I understand, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Because I told her, I said, no, it's not just that now. It's something you got. And I'm not talking about intimacy or anything like that. It's something that I need to be, I need to be around your presence. I need you to grab a hold of this and multiply it. Because it's not only physical stuff. I'm dealing with all kind of stuff up in here. But if you understand that husband fathers, then when you sense that, you know what you need to be doing. And wifey, wifey, mother, you will understand what's going on. And you don't want him wearing himself out, kick, go sleep and drive and trying to get to you because you're lonely. You want him to get to you when it's necessary because he got something. And then you know that you got something he need. Could be a, a back rub, foot massage, or just talk, anything. Because we need that, you know, we deal with a lot of stuff. Men deal with a lot of stuff whole lot of stuff. Uh, and when I say that, I'm talking about a husband, father who was operating his position, functioning his role play, and he had his heavy mandate on him, and he know the anointing is on him to bless his seed. Now, that's powerful. All that is on him. And you, you know what, uh, who was it, Rachel, did with Esau and J Jacob, and then he changed his name to Yisrael? It was the same. Listen, the father had already said, uh, you got two nations in your womb. And the older is going to serve the younger, just like Ephraim and Manasseh. He had already said that. But what happened? Rachel got in it. Got in it, had the boy lying and everything. And the only reason the, the spirit of Elohim allowed it to take place is because he had already said that Yisrael will have the firstborn blessing. He had already said that before she had him. And I read that today, that boy lied four times to his dad. He dishonored his dad four times. And the only reason he wasn't cursed is because the word had already been spoken from the Holy Spirit that he would be the recep recipient of the firstborn blessing. And the, the king's law can't be, word can't be changed. Even Jacob lied because uh, Israel says, that you? you that? Yeah, it's me. You sure you my son? Uh, uh, Esau, it's me. Come on over, let me. Uh, well, give me, fix me something to eat, cause Esau, he, that boy can cook. He go out and get them deals and stuff, and man, put that season in it. And his dad loved that, so his mama went fix the meal like her son had did it. And 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 here, Yisrael bring. He ate that food. He said, "Man, this this gotta be, but something ain't right. But only Esau can cook this meat like this." Because he asked him, he said, how you get it so quick? He even knew how long it take him to go out and hunt. He was still checking him, still giving opportunity for him to tell the truth. And in a moment, uh, your cop could have told the truth and it would have been done the way the father wanted it done. But instead of that, he suffered the consequences of it of being separated from his family and a contention with his brother. Rachel did that. His mama got in. <laughs> so <laughs> so Isha's, you have to watch it. Don't get in between stuff like that with them boys or the girls and they dad if they trying to bring correction or do some things and you know how y'all get in it 
Oh, oh, cause yeah. No, don't mess with him. Don't mess with him here. No, I need to knock this Negro out. He rose up at me. You should be saying, knock him out. Hit him twice. <laughs> Put him to sleep. <laughs> Put him to sleep. No, don't. That's my child. I, I labor for that child. Don't you touch him. Don't you. <laughs> then he said, well, y'all can have it. Oh, yeah, that's your husband, too. I'm gone. Now you boo-hoo and calling mama and stuff. <laughs> that could be avoided. Okay. All right. So we through. We're going to stop there because I think I had a, a question. Okay. And there are some scripture for you here. My son, hear the instructions of your who? Father, and do not forsake the Torah, the teaching. Y'all see this? Of your who? See a teacher of who? Righteousness. Y'all see that? Now watch this. My child, listen when your father corrects you. Who is correcting? Now, y'all can leave it on. We, if they want to do the Q&A, we can, or we can shut it off. It's up to y'all. But my child, listen when your father corrects you. And don't go be boohooing the mama. And you see mama walk in, then you drop your head. You're going to get an uppercut. Raise that head up. Come on, what's wrong, baby? And you know he in there correcting his butt. Now you come in and raise your head up. What you looking like that for when I walk in? What your dad will tell you. That's where you're supposed to come in. Now watch this. <laughs> but don't neglect your mother's what? You see that? Now how can you instruct you don't know nothing? You're on the internet. Dr. Spock and all them old books reading all that old mess. You see it? Yeah. I just wanted to give you that. And uh, these some words mean that. Now Torah, a legal prescription of something that should or must be done. Instruction, information that is imparted to a student. That's another uh, definition of Torah. Okay, let's get this uh, question then. I first, can, uh, first question. It's been said that, well, trending, that when two people get married, that it's between that couple and Elohim, and no judge or preacher has to do it because it's a covenant between them and Elohim. Can you talk about this? Okay, so when a person get married, in other words, yeah, they guess. don't have to get married to the courthouse oh, okay. before a judge or a preacher. All right. They can just say that they're married. Because oh, that's between oh, them. oh, so they, they before the fall now, right? <laughs> you say it simple that it is? Because when that happened, the only time, no, it didn't even happen then. Because the, the Holy Spirit did the marriage. He put Adam to a deep sleep, cloned the body for his, his wife. And he brought her, the, he brought Isha to Adam. Then Adam said, Isha. His anointing just jumped out, said, that's Isha. She come from the fire, she came from me. That's what he said, didn't he? But who brought her to? The father was right there. Orchestrating, facilitating the marriage. Right? And then after the fall, what happened? You had representatives to facilitate. And who was it? It was the father of the daughter. Because he would give his daughter to another father. The same thing. Here is your wife. Then nobody go out and just say I'm married now, I'm married. Now, also, if you're a citizen of the United States of America, there's a law that says that you need to do it legal. You need some license to get married. If you're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, it's the, it's, it's, you, you see the concept, I mean the precept here? That... If you say that you are married and this person say you're married and ain't, you don't have no, nothing sanctioning that, that's, that's, uh, that's lawlessness. It's a spirit of lawlessness. Because just like you said you married and you go and do your thing, then you can also say we're not married. <laughs> so you don't want to talk about that, though. Ain't, no, ain't no divorce. We just not married. I said we said we're married, now we're not. Case closed. Go on about your business. And you go to somebody else. And get their retirement accounts and their investments account. You put that, when, we, when you're dealing with questions like that, that's where you have to have the spirit and the word. You have to have the precepts. The scriptures are holy or integrated. You have to take that whole thing and put it together and say, wait a minute. To do that, wouldn't that be, is that, li is that lawful? And we know the kingdom is set up on what? Laws. That's a person making an individual law for themselves. We don't have... We got dominion. We don't have dominion to make, make new laws. The laws have already been set by our government. So for someone to go out and establish another law on their own, they're rebelling against 
the government that they are a citizen of. Y'all catching it? Okay. So is that good? All right. What's the next? Is there anything else that somebody posted or something? What if um, when you were talking about the father, if he's not present? Well, if what if the father is present, but he's not a believer? Or what if the father is not can present? Can y'all hear it through the sound system? Okay. What if the father is not present or mm -hmm. if he's dead? Mm -hmm. And what if the father is out of place mm -hmm. and doesn't or doesn't know his position? So it's Okay, so this is, let's say, two knowledgeable kingdom citizens, ambassadors, and they're coming, coming to, uh, they're getting married. All right. And one of their fathers is out of position, don't know his place. Or not, let's say if he did, he did, he did, you still get a representative. Still get a representative. And then let's say he's not born again, he's not saved. You can tell him what his role play is and what's about to happen. He agreed to it, he still can do it. Because he's still, whether he know it or not, the anointing is still in it. And when I say that, and first thing you said, well, he's not born again. Right. Still, when he was born on this earth, See, it's not that the father said, okay, now you're born again. Now you got the authority. No, by creative right, you have the authority imparted into you when you were born. You seeing it? Now the spirit is dead and cut off and don't get destruction on how to use what's on the inside. See, not to be born again means that that spirit is cut off from communicating with the living holy. The, holy, the spirit is alive, but it's not connected or don't have access to heaven or the presence of heaven. Y'all seeing it? Just, just like people not saved make better on their tests than people that are saved. Some people that are not saved live more more lives than people who are saved. Y'all catching it? So, you know, things like that, kingdom citizen, it's easy. You can get a representative who can do that and understand that because he's a citizen of the kingdom. Now, that father's not a citizen, but you can acknowledge him. And if you get the understanding, then fine. So uh, things like that, I know, I know it's real big, too. It's real big because people have these questions. But most of the time, people have these questions because they don't understand the, the kingdom message or the kingdom precepts that, that regulate things like this. But that stuff where I said we marry, we marry, you are not the king. <laughs> you don't make laws. The government of the kingdom that you're a citizen of make the laws. Okay. <laughs> There's something else called common law marriage also. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how long a person would have to be married. but Or be living to, together. Yeah, and living DNA together declared. right? to be considered common law. I think it's 10 years. I'm not sure. but anyway. Well, they living together in, in, in an act of defiance against, again, the kingdom of heaven government. Because if they are not married, they live in a life of adultery and fornication. I don't care what the common law say. You, you being intimate with that person, you living with them, and the scripture said clearly not to touch a woman if you're not married. What that means, not to cohabitate with no woman or man that you are not married to. That's what the scripture say. So if someone is saying, well, after 10 years we married in a way, but not in the eyes of the Holy Spirit. That's in that, why is it so when stuff come up, don't call on the Holy Spirit. You got to call on who sanctioned that, which is darkness coming out of the world. Y'all catch this? Yes. I know it's bad out here. People are doing it all the time because you know what? The preachers are telling them it's okay. Christians are telling them it's okay. Christians are advising their children to live together until they make their mind up what they want to do. And they say that they're Christians. That's hypocrisy. Okay, and the scripture talks about that. They twist the word to their own destruction because they just released uh, darkness and death and destruction into that person's life who is doing it. It's just not going to turn out. Where they got a career, it still don't turn out. Because you know what? When the books are open, <laughs> whether you saved or not, books getting open. <laughs> okay, now who told you that you can do this? Your mama, uh, come, come, yeah, yeah, you, you, no, 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 you, come here, come here. Now, you told him to do this, and y'all were stupid enough to listen to her, so be stupid enough to get in the stupid line then. You're not going through this one right here. <laughs> I try to make it comical, but people are doing this, and they, they just doing it because they just want to fulfill that sex stuff. They just can't take it. 
Is that it? No more questions? Okay, so you didn't see anything else on there? Okay. All right, then. So we are finished. So, Father, uh, y'all can stop streaming now. I have you stop already. All right, before we stop, like us on YouTube. YouTubers, help us out on something. We need about 400 more subscribers to get over a certain amount. That way we can YouTube live anywhere without, without using an additional app. And that right, DJ? Tech, I mean, Tech, tech J? That's Tech J. So uh, I know we constantly adding, but y'all get the word out. I want you to not only click and like, but get some people, other people subscribe to us. And once we hit that number there, then, because I be wanting to talk to YouTube live a lot, but I have to open that app, blah, blah, blah. blah and uh, we're going to fix that, though. All right? Appreciate you. Share the video. Love you much. Shah Shalom.